I became interested in Jigme Lingba probably for reasons that most people don't, and, and that's because I, at first I thought he was an interesting historian. Uh, I read Michael Aris's translation of his uh, work on the early modern history and state of political and economic affairs of uh, uh, Eastern India. And I thought, well, this is really fascinating, a Tibetan Buddhist who's going out of his way to learn about um, uh, life on the ground uh, a, a little bit south of him. And he actually went so far as to get uh, informants, uh, traders, uh, people coming up from India to tell him what was going on in India. And he wrote a little book called Discourse on India. It's about Assam and Kuch Bihar. And it's about life there, which includes some religion too, but it's also about politics and, and economics. And I thought, well, what an interesting fellow, because I'd known he had, I, I knew he was, you know, known for so many other things on uh, north of the Himalayas. And it's only later after that that I started to become more interested in his collected works as a whole. And what I started to realize that Jigme Lingba, like many others, uh, was a really, really a, a well-rounded intellectual. He was able to uh, write about history. He was able to write great works of philosophy. Uh, he wrote visionary poetry and uh, visionary prose. Um, he wrote uh, ornate, uh, uh, ornate kavya-inspired poetry. He wrote gur. He wrote songs. Um, and he was an institutional leader, albeit uh, of a rather small institution. So he has a great story. Um, he was born in the uh, in around 1729 or 30 uh, in the Chungia Valley, so right next to the tombs of the Tibetan kings. And this proximity to the oldest strata of Tibetan history seems to have been inspiring for him because he wrote small histories of the tombs, and he also was. He wrote small histories of the, of the imperial temples and also was active in renovating imperial temples as well. Uh, he was also next to what had, by the 18th century, become uh, a, a, a Nyingma stronghold, which is Samye and then Samye Chimpu, the retreat center up above that too. So in his early life, um, he was at a Nyingma monastery. He took uh, Gatesville vows. He took novice vows, but he never did take full uh, monastic ordination. In fact, we believe he had uh, consorts or female partners, and is known to have had, had, had a son as well, um, who went on to be recognized as an incarnation in the Drigung tradition much later in Jigme Lingba's life. Um, his formative um, visionary period is, uh, is in his 20s when he goes into uh, two nearly consecutive retreats, two three year retreats. And in these uh, uh, his, he has visionary encounters with Longchenpa, Longchenpa and a host of other uh, um, uh, visionary figures, and he comes out of these retreats with his two major works, at least the seeds for his two major works. And one of them is the Longchen Ningtik, and, and one of them is the, um, the, the, the Yun Tenzo. So one of them is his um, uh, um, um, uh, innermost uh, quintessence cycle of ritual practice and contemplative practice uh, and, uh, and Dzogchen theology. The other is a, a, a kind of stages of the path work and it, I think, holds a place with Tsongkhapa's uh, great stages of the path work uh, except that it's very much a Nyingma work. It goes from uh, uh, the, the introductory moments of uh, Buddhist life and practice uh, up through Mahayoga and Dzogchen and ends with this incredible uh, vision of the cosmos uh, as uh, an enlightened space, as enlightened energy, and it's as rich and rewarding as anything that you would read from Longchenpa as well. So um, his work, uh, uh, the, the um, Treasury of Precious Qualities, was considered to be a very difficult work, his prose work that was a commentary to his own verses. So it spawned a couple centuries worth of uh, 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 philosophical commentary on this work, and it's now one of the most popular works among Nyingma philosophical circles for training in the whole range of, of Buddhist thought and practice. Uh, I hope that in the future we'll get to see a translation of his work uh, itself in alongside some of the other translations that are coming out. Um, he did other amazing things too. Um, he, uh, he, probably the most important of which 
uh, is the redaction and printing of the collected tonsures of the ancients, of the Nemeg Ubum. And he was really, uh, he was good at cultivating patronage. He had patron patrons in the Chungye Valley, patron in, patrons uh, around Samye uh, and in central Tibet, but he also later in life developed a very good relationship with the king and queen of Dege. This is in the 1780s and 90s. And uh, throughout, through the uh, patronage of the queen of Dege, he was able to collect and have printed at Dege um, the, the collected tonsures of the ancients that was going to then become the, the ubiquitous version of that uh, collection. Um, and this again, I think it shows him as a, as a, a great editor, a great, let's you, you might say project manager, but also a great historian too, a great literary historian, but also a great historian of people and places and events too. Because his catalog to the collected tantras of the ancients is one of the great works of Nyingma history. Um, when we think of catalogs, we think of lists of texts, but in Tibet this was generally not the case. You could have something that was as simple as a list of texts, but more often than not, the great writers like Jigme Lingba um, would write whole histories of, uh, of, of the Dharma. And for him, it begins with uh, the Buddha, but then it moves through the, uh, the Nyingma writers, uh, 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 especially uh, Longchenpa, and through the collection efforts that those people uh, in the 13th, 14th, and 15th centuries engaged in to collect the, uh, to collect the early Nyingma Tantras. Um, so this is one of the things that he's be uh, bequeathed to us, uh, is the Nyingma Gyubum, uh, the collected Tantras of the ancients as we know it now. So for all of these reasons, he's an amazing person to try and see as a whole uh, intellectual, historian, visionary, um, uh, 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 literary producer, uh, and um, uh, institution builder as well. And he's really one of the foundational figures for the Nyingma tradition uh, after that. And many of the works that we know and love, uh, including I mean, most especially Words of My Perfect Teacher, are based on his writings, based on his formulation of uh, Nyingma uh, introductory practices um, that, that so many of us learn basic Buddhism from. So he's a foundational figure and a really interesting figure as well.